When a ball collides with another stationary ball, we need to prove that angle of divergence, so angle of divergence, the angle between the two balls, it is equal to 90 degree when collision is elastic and it is differ, differs from 90 degree, which means it cannot be 90 degree when the collision is inelastic. So let's prove one by one. So it hits this ball, this ball will go this way, this will go this way and the divergence is the angle between them. So we need to prove that if this collision is elastic, then this angle is always 90 degree. And when the collision is not elastic or if it is inelastic, then this angle is not 90 degree. It can be anything else. Now let's see that for elastic collision, we will conserve momentum. So V0 vector is equal to V1 vector plus V2 vector. So we are doing it in vector form because we need the angle between them. So this uh, considering the magnitude so that we get a const the term of cos theta on the right side, we will get V0 square is equal to V1 square plus V2 square plus 2 V1 V2 cos theta. And conserving energy, we will get half m V0 square is equal to so half m will terms will get cancelled because both the molecules are of same mass so we'll get v0 square is equal to v1 square plus v2 square so now we can see from both the equations that cos theta must be zero which means theta must be pi by two now actually this is not the only solution the another, another solution is of course if v1 becomes zero then also both the equations are satisfied and you can see that will happen when the collision is head on. So that case we will not consider because if the velocity itself is zero then there is no question of angle of divergence. So for there, for there to be an angle of divergence both the molecules should be traveling with certain velocity. So this proves that for elastic collision between two particles, the angle of divergence is always pi by two. Now for inelastic collision due to heat loss, the energy equation, the first equation will remain the same because that is the momentum conservation. Second energy, second equation will differ as the initial energy will be greater than the final energy due to heat loss, which means V0 square must be greater than V1 square plus V2 square. Now again, if you compare this first equation with this second equation, you will see cos theta must be greater than zero, which means it should be theta should be between zero and pi by two. So just remember, these are the cases only when they are of equal masses. If they are not of equal masses, neither of these equations will be true. So yeah.